with deep appreciation for your visionary guidance and outstanding leadership. Yes, we are going to talk aerospace with Maypal. I got Michael waiting inside right now because the details of what they're doing here for the R&D side of aerospace just might blow your mind. So let's go take a look. Michael, good to see you, Tony. my friend. Thank How you, you so much for allowing us to bring cameras in here. Great to have you. One of my favorite subjects is aerospace. I mean, the world of aerospace is, uh, from my side and what I've seen, somewhat complicated at times. It can be, yeah. Challenging, complicated, among things, yeah. yeah sure. We need people like you in our lives to help uncomplicate some of those issues. Yeah. Okay. And to my knowledge, we have some uh, demos and stuff that we're going to go over today on camera that are going to resolve, hopefully, some complications for other folks. But before we get to the machine, that nice DMG Mori over there, let's kind of start with what I'm looking at here because rivets, from what I understand, and I've filmed at a couple of aerospace companies, can kind of be a pain and a lot of people or all people are still doing it by hand. Uh, yeah, either by hand or uh, on a drill motor, a portable drill motor, because it's done at aerospace final assembly um, and you're going to have mixed material stacks which is extremely challenging you have to drill it with one tool uh, so you're going through carbon fiber titanium aluminum things like that one uh, tool with one tool that makes sense yeah <laughs> if you so, can do it it's great so yeah. we wanted to offer that little teaser because we have a machine in the back that we want everyone to see Correct. to uncomplicate i'm not even sure if that is a word but i've used it at least three times now <laughs> but before we get there and before we get to these demos that are mind-blowing as well let's talk about the reasonings behind why you started this facility in 2018. so uh maypal in the united states is well known in the automotive industry and cost per part normally is the motivating factor to you know bring innovation to the market mm -hmm. and innovation is in our dna uh, the aerospace market is a little different. Um, that's going to be safety being a top priority with process consistency being the focus. Uh, so because of that, it's very difficult to bring new ideas uh, and solutions to the market, uh, especially with the OEMs uh, who are doing final assembly. I can honestly say I'm very grateful that safety is a priority as much as I fly. Yeah, there's a reason it's, <laughs> it's, it's as safe it is, as it is. So. Yeah, and with all the cars being made, I'd like safety to be there too, but right. I understand that it's price per part there. All right, I'm, I'm excited because I've seen, I've seen ahead of time. I get a sneak peek before I do this, but Michael, let's step over here. Let's look at what's going on inside this machine. There's a couple of really fascinating demos because this is about R&D. This is about right. making processes better for folks. And sometimes you get some requests that seem incredibly difficult, but that's what this area is for. Correct, correct, yeah. So I have two examples here in the machine. Uh, the first one, it's gonna be the one on the left. It was for a tier one supplier and they were having issues exceeding the exit burr uh, requirement from the OEM and they were doing they were having issues from the first hole and that was causing them to have to go back and manually remove burrs from thousands of holes in a shift Aye. so we took on the challenge we requested material we made uh, tools made a fixture to hold it did testing optimization delivered a report uh, tools and the workpiece material back to the customer um, so from start to finish, from, from the inception to the uh, delivering a fully custom solution for them was less than two weeks. <laughs> All right, Michael, hold on. You took a process that was giving them hardship yep. on thousands of parts in less than two weeks? Yes. <laughs> and so in all of our testing, the, the results of that, um, we never exceeded 50% of the maximum allowable burr that was testing here. The customer uh, determined that the tool life was over 10,000 holes per tool. So they went from deburring from the beginning to not having to do it for more than 10,000 holes. That's incredible. I, I don't know this answer. You might not know this answer either, but did they ever give you feedback on how much time was saved there? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we, we investigate that. Uh, sometimes it's offered uh, voluntarily by them. Um, what we typically are going to ask because we're interested. I right? want to know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that, that helps us because then it helps us bring it to others in the market. 
right so uh super cool michael and to, I, I like that spot that you said also 50 percent of the requirement right for that right because be obviously before it wasn't passing at all right and then right. you didn't even make it to that 50 percent mark so that's really cool we have a second part here as well um i first looked at this and immediately got giant cartoon eyes and i said michael are you getting ready to try to make a full slot in this material and you actually said yes yeah so we actually had a request from a uh, oem and they were using a 3 8 inch uh, composite router to full slot cut one inch thick unidirectional CFRP material, which is a challenging task. Um, the request from them though, was to increase feed from 60 inches per minute to 100 inches per minute. So a 40% increase in feed. All right, again, I, I gotta take a step back, Michael. You're asking, someone's asking you to increase the speed on a process that is already difficult to do, if even right. possible to do. Now, is this pre process already been proven? Were you able to do it? And also, what are some of the complications in a process like that with this material? Well, so it's in the machine, so we obviously had good results, but uh, we basically in-house, we developed an optimized geometry, made tools, did testing, and ultimately that optimized uh, cutting geometry made it into one of our standard product offerings. So this affected the global product offerings. Um, but challenges with something like this is, well, obviously we had to make the tool stronger, more stable, um, and still try to maintain the cutting performance itself. And we're talking about surface finish, uh, delamination where the fibers, the layers want to come apart. And we experienced none of this in our testing. So I've had issues like that as well. Some of my experience, I've ripped the different fibers apart and wondered how to make it better. I think it's really cool what you just said, Michael, that this was an R&D test that you were able to help the customer out. It's obviously in here because we're sharing it for a reason, but then it became a global product that helps right. others as well. Isn't that the true gift of the R&D areas? No, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And, and it goes both ways. We have other R&D locations throughout the world and we all communicate and share this information. So, and yeah. we're going to have another video on that as well because they do have a great team here at Maple uh, discussing with other places around the world to make sure these things are done correctly. All right, Michael, we gave a teaser at the beginning. We talked rivets. We talked about some of the pain that could be with three, four, five, I don't know, what was it three materials, right? Right, right? I was just going to exaggerate a little bit like I do sometimes, but three materials, same tool trying to drill through all three materials and you have a machine back here there's only two in the world of its kind there's nowhere else in the world right can we take a look absolutely come on guys let's take a look michael's going to show us something that maybe we've never seen before i had never seen it before we definitely want to focus on some of the software area side as well because what we're looking at and what we're learning i think is incredibly fascinating but when i first walked in here michael i looked at uh, our friend Dan, and I was like, what in the world is this? And I have seen hundreds of machines in thousands of shops around the world and had never seen this. Right. Yeah, so this uh, piece of test equipment is a Mitis ADU test bench. Uh, an ADU, uh, it's often used in aerospace final assembly. Uh, it means advanced drilling unit. It's a portable drill motor. They move it from fixtured point to fixtured point to produce a hole in a workpiece whenever they put two sections together, for example. Uh, and the test bench itself is actually measuring the cutting forces that the workpiece is experiencing. And that gives us great insight into the actual performance of the tool instead of just measuring the workpiece after the fact. So. And we, these results are then displayed here? Correct. And allow us to pretty much know how to optimize a very yeah difficult, usual difficult situation. Right, so say if you're having issues with diameter and you notice that the torque measurements go really high after a certain depth, that can you know conclude that maybe the, uh, the tool's wearing out faster than expected, it's wearing in and it's work hardening the material, such like in titanium or something like that, so. Can I ask you a, a kind of a, a pickier question? Uh, and everyone who watches this channel, you know sometimes I get questions that pop up just based on the person I'm interviewing being super intelligent and wanting to learn from them. When I picture running through three materials, and I myself from a programming background think of this, 
in order to solve some of these issues, are we changing speeds and RPM as we go through? Or are we just trying to plunge through and find a tool that can do it all? Well, so- uh, I see that you're smiling about yeah, this. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I was gonna talk about it. Um, traditionally, these ADUs are pneumatic. So they have a fixed feed and speed and stroke for a given configuration. In order to change, you have to change gearboxes and stuff. Um, there are some offerings in the market now which have CNC control. So some of our customers use that and they like that, um, but they're not as portable. All you need to run this is it's gonna be an airline. Um, so yeah, absolutely. In the case of an electric drilling unit, you could change feed and speed to optimize for those particular materials. It, it, that's that's fat. And, and if I'm a human trying to do this yeah. on my own, am I just trying to gauge the vibration in the fill like a wood on a manual machine of some sort, right? Well, the good thing about this is, it, you know, you move it from a fixture point to a fixture point and it does all the work. I'm not pushing this into the part or anything like that. Um, now they do still do manual hand drilling in airspace, which Again, for safety reasons, that sounds crazy, but they do it. They do it often to, uh, to get into an area where you just can't get a drill motor or a CNC machine or a robot or something like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. Uh, it's, it's really cool. All right, we're gonna close this thing out, Michael, but I wanna leave this moment for you because we talked a little bit about the creation of this facility in 2018. Right. We showed a couple of demos of what you're working on and the complications that come with that. A unique machine that's only two in the world, but I want you to talk to the audience a little bit about, look, if you have this issue, if you have this problem, if you wanna reach out to us, this is how you do it. We're happy to help you. you know, th those kind of things as a, as a kind of a closing statement for everyone. Right. So. If you have a Maple representative, a salesperson, or a point of contact, reach out to them. They'll get in touch with the uh, test department. And uh, yeah. That's pretty much how that's, it works. That's pretty much You're how it works. You're making it too easy. Hey. We want it to be that easy for everyone watching. Right, though, right? correct. Oh, awesome, Michael. I thank you so much for your time today. This is an area that when these cameras shut off, I'm staying because I want to spend more time in learning how this all works. Let's do it. Awesome, Michael. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you. Only two machines in the world like this and those demo parts. Oh my gosh. So if you have an issue, give Michael a call. Give the folks here at Maypal a call. They can help you sort out those details. This is that almost 75 years in business, third generation, family owned company that loves the difficult things and then providing a solution. I mean, you heard it. Two weeks, a solution that was something that couldn't even be done previously. Absolutely amazing. Michael, appreciate your time, my friend. Not a problem. Thanks for having me.